Hey, welcome back everyone. Thank you for taking time to go through the module three review questions. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your instructor for this AZ 900 Azure Fundamentals course. So the first question is, which of the following could grant you, which of the following could grant or DNA access based on the originating IP address? Is it Azure Active Directory? Definitely not. Azure Active Directory is your identity and access management solution in the cloud. Is it VPN Gateway? Definitely not, because VPN gateways are used to create VPN tunnels or as a gateway solution. So the right answer is Azure Firewall. The Azure Firewall grants server access based on the originating IP address for each request. You create firewall rules that specify ranges of IP address. Only clients from the granted IP address will be allowed to access the server. The firewall rules also include specific network protocol and port information. Which of the following could require both a password and a security question for full authentication? So the key word here is not only password, you need to go through a security question as well. So what's that solution about? Is it firewall? No, we just discussed about firewall capability. Is it application gateway? Application gateway is also a type of firewall which provides web application firewall capability. So the right answer is multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication or MFA can require two or more elements for full authentication. So which of the following services would you use to filter internet traffic in your Azure network. So the key word over here is you would need to filter internet traffic. So we discussed that in the first lesson of this module when we talked about network security group. Is it Azure Firewall? Definitely not. We discussed Azure Firewall capability in the first question. Is it VPN Gateway? Definitely not because Gateway provide VPN tunneling capability. It doesn't provide you filtering capability. So the right answer is network security group. NSDs allow you to filter traffic to and from Azure resources in an Azure virtual network. An NSG can contain multiple inbound and outbound security rules that enable you to filter traffic to and from resources by source and destination IP address, ports, and protocol. Which of the following lets you store passwords in Azure so you can centrally manage them for your services and applications? So the key words over here is you need to store passwords and secrets, and you would have to centrally manage them as well. Is it Azure Advanced Threat Protection? No, Azure Advanced Threat Protection will give you behavioral intelligence of your existing resources on your Azure and on-prem. Is it Azure Security Center? Definitely not. Security Center again gives you recommendations, best practices on all of your resources on-prem and in Azure. So the right answer is Azure Key Vault. Azure Key Vault is a centralized cloud service for storing your application secrets. Key Vault helps you control your application's secrets by keeping them in a single central location and by providing secure access, permission control, and access logging capabilities. Which of the following should you use to download published audit reports and how Microsoft built and operates its cloud services? So the key word here is you need to download the published audit reports. So where can you go and find this audit reports built by Microsoft related to its cloud services? Is it Azure policy? Definitely not. Azure policy is the policy you can create and apply in a subscription level or a resource group level, etc. Is it service health? No. Azure service health will give you details about the health of all Azure services. 
So the correct answer here is Service Trust Portal or STP. The Service Trust Portal is the Microsoft public site for publishing audit reports and other compliance related information relevant to Microsoft Cloud Services. STP users can download audit reports produced by external auditors and gain insight from Microsoft authored reports that provide details on how Microsoft builds and operates its cloud services. Which of the following provides information about planned maintenance and changes that cloud affect the availability of your resources? So the key information is about planned maintenance and changes that could affect the availability of resources or Azure services. Is it Azure Monitor? Definitely not. Azure Monitor can give you the real-time reporting or near real-time reporting about the Azure services and resources held. Azure Security Center will give you details about recommendations, best practices about the resources in Azure and on-premises. So the correct answer is the third option, which is Azure Service Health. Azure Service Health is a suite of experiences that provide personalized guidance and support when issues with Microsoft services affect you. It can notify you, help you understand the impact of the issues and keep you up to date as the issue is resolved. Azure Service Health can also help you prepare for planned maintenance and changes that could affect the availability of the resources. Where can you obtain details about the personal data, Microsoft processes, how Microsoft processes it, and for what purposes. Is it Azure Service Health? No, we just talked about Azure Service Health capability. Is it Compliance Manager? No, Compliance Manager is you, where you can go and find the audit report. So the right answer is Microsoft Privacy Statement. So Microsoft Privacy Statement explains what personal data Microsoft processes how Microsoft processes it, and for what purposes. Which of the following can be used to help you enforce resource tagging so you can manage billing? So the key word here is enforcing resource tagging. So how can you enforce resource tagging? It is by using Azure policy. So the right answer is Azure policy. Because Azure policy can be used to enforce tagging values and rules on resources. So which of the following can be used to define a repeatable set of Azure resources that implement organizational requirements? Is it Azure policy? Definitely not. We talked about Azure policy just now. You can use Azure policy to enforce certain values and parameters. Is it Azure resource group? Azure Azure Resource Group is a logical container where you keep Azure resources. So the correct answer is Azure Blueprint. Azure Blueprints enable cloud architects to define a repeatable set of Azure resources that implement and adhere to your organization standards, patterns, and requirements. Azure Blueprints enables development teams to rapidly build and deploy new environments with the knowledge that they are building within their organizational compliance with a set of built-in components that speed up the development and delivery. Which of the following lets you grant users only the rights they need to perform their job? So the key word here is grant rights, only the rights they need to perform their job. So is it Azure policy? No, Azure policy is a policy which you can use to enforce certain enforce certain tasks. Compliance manager can give you audit reports and the score. So the correct answer is role-based access control or RBAC. So RBAC lets you to grant users only the rights they need to perform their job. Which of these options help you most easily disable an account when an employee leaves your organization? So the key word over here is easily disable when an employee leaves your organization. So is it multi-factor authentication? 
No, multi-factor authentication is a dual factor authentication to validate your credentials before granting you access to a particular service. Is it monitor single sign on? Is it monitor sign on attempts? No, monitor sign on attempts can only monitor who signed who signed into what application or what service. So the correct answer is using single sign on. SSO or single sign on centralizes user identity. So you can disable an inactive account in a single step. Wow, that's a long one. What is Azure Information Protection? So basically, we will have to read the statement and tell which one is the right one. So the first statement, or uh, let me go and read the last statement. AIP is a monitoring service that provides threat protection across all your services, both in Azure and on-premises. No, AIP is not a monitoring service that provides threat protection. That service is called Azure ATP. So what is the next statement? AIP is a cloud-based security solution that identifies, detects, and helps you investigate advanced threats, compromise identities, and malicious insider actions. Definitely not. AIP cannot do any of that. That can be done by Azure Identity Protection or Azure Privilege Identity and Azure Threat and Azure ATP as well. So the right answer is the first statement, which is AIP is a cloud-based solution that helps organizations classify, protect its document and emails by applying labels. These labels can be applied automatically, manually, or a combination of both. The automatic apply of label require you to have an Azure AD P2 license. Which of the following items would be good use for you to have a resource lock? So the key word here is resource lock. Uh, is it a storage account used to temporarily store images processed by development environment? No, because it is being used temporarily, so I don't have to worry about locking that resource. Is it a non-production virtual machine used to test occasional application build? Again, it is not critical because it's a non-production virtual machine and it is being used occasionally. Definitely not. So the right answer is the first statement an express route circuit with connectivity back to your on-premises. Because it's a very critical network that is making your on-prem environment in talk with your Azure environment. So it's a super critical, it's a super critical resource. So you would put a resource log so that nobody modifies or delete accidentally. Let's look at the last question. Which of the following approaches would be the most efficient way to ensure a naming convention was followed across your subscription. So we are looking at an efficient way to ensure naming convention. We know what to do. The best way to do that is by applying Azure policy. So let's read out these statements. Send out an email with the details of the naming convention, hope it been followed. That's very traditional way. It can work, but that's not an efficient way. Give all other users ex give all other users except for yourself read only access to the subscription have all requests create resources send you to oh my god that's such a complicated process definitely not so the correct answer is second statement create a policy with your naming requirement and assign it to a scope of your subscription using azure policy ensures that you cannot only recommend a naming standard, but report on its adoption as well. So I hope the information provided in the module three review questions was useful. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the final learning path of this Azure AZ-900 fundamental series, which is about Azure pricing, service level agreements, and lifecycle. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.